The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most iconic horror films of all time. The film was loved by critics and audiences alike, and was made on a notoriously low budget. And when a studio has a film made with $100,000 make $38 million at the box office, they're going to do what studios do. Make it a franchise. Now when I say make it a franchise, I mean trying desperately to make a single good movie. The Texas Chainsaw franchise has 10 movies in it, and there hasn't been a singular good one since the first one in 1974. They have been making Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies for 48 years and have failed to make a single good one. This franchise is up there with the Children of the Corn franchise for being one of the worst horror movie franchises of all time. And there has been some really bad movies in this franchise. But none of them compare to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Now I watched this movie back in January and it is to this day still the worst movie I have seen all year. And that's saying something because Morbius came out this year. And it might even be one of the worst movies I've seen in my entire life. So sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy me getting angry about a franchise I couldn't care less about. There is absolutely nothing good about this movie. I mean absolutely nothing. If it was a terrible, fun slasher movie, I would give it a pass. I wouldn't be talking about it right now. But it's not fun. Nothing about this is fun. And the reason it's not fun is because they decided to take themselves incredibly seriously. There's a bus slaughter scene in this movie, and if it was any other Texas Chainsaw sequel, it would be a fun, campy, killed, filled scene. They decided to make this scene traumatizing and horrific and compare it to something incredibly insensitive, which I'll mention later. But you built a franchise on being fun, campy movies, and now you're deciding to take this dark direction with it? Now when I say they're taking themselves seriously, I don't mean there's no jokes in this movie, because there are. But they're all... Try anything you cancel, bro. Terrible. Not only are they not funny, but they're all terribly timed and feel out of place. Not every movie has to be funny. I feel like I would have enjoyed this film more if there wasn't these terrible jokes. Or maybe if the tone was more established and they actually knew what they were going for, they would have felt more in place. But the tone in this movie is all over the place. Even in scenes the characters are supposed to be terrified, the actors are playing them like they're in a Scooby-Doo movie. And the acting in this movie is all around terrible. Everyone is delivering their lines like they're half awake and hungover. I would honestly be more annoyed at this if they weren't given the absolute worst dialogue of all time. Special K doesn't do well outside, you understand? That is why I can't ever leave you. What are you even talking about? The plot makes absolutely no sense, so I'm gonna attempt to explain it for you. But keep in mind, I've watched this movie three times, which is depressing to invent, and I still have no idea what's going on here. So the main group of characters are all food YouTubers. Oh! What the hell is even that? except the main character, who is the younger sister of one. And they're trying to build some utopia town in the middle of Texas, and Leatherface is just kind of there. And I know what they're trying to do here, a modernized take on the Texas Chainsaw franchise. But oh my god, was this movie written by a grandma? What kind of YouTuber would try to create a town and why would they do it in the middle of Texas? Anyways, Leatherface is living with an old lady in this movie, and the YouTubers come in to kick her out of her house because they think that they own it, but then it turns out that she actually owned it, but she died. Then Leatherface gets mad and... I think you can connect the dots here. The rest of the movie is just the main characters getting killed off one by one, which would be interesting if I cared about any of these people. You just showed them killing an old lady, why would I care about them? Damn. Now this is where I gotta talk about the main character's backstory. It's very serious subject matter, so if you don't want to hear about that, skip to the timestamp on the screen. They make the main character of the film a school shooting survivor for absolutely no reason. And they bring it up constantly throughout the movie. And I know what they're trying to do here, because they're in no way, shape, or form subtle about it, but it's just not working. It doesn't make me sympathize with her for two reasons. One, because the actor portraying the character is so awful that every emotional scene is just terrible. Everyone expects me to do something special with my life now, and, and I can only disappoint them. And two, it just makes me pissed off at the writers for deciding that this was a good idea. It's not inclusive or brave or woke or whatever they were trying to do with it. 
It's just disrespectful to those who have actually been through this. It's made even worse when the character is awfully written. And it's so infuriating that the writers decided to not only include this, but also include lifeless children laying dead in a school hallway. The bus scene I mentioned earlier is directly compared to the shooting, which is just... It's just gross. It's disgusting, and I absolutely hate it. Not only is it insensitive, but it's downright disrespectful. Sure. Well, we have your number, and uh, we thank you for your service, sir. Despite that, there is still a worse character choice in the film. They keep making homages to other horror films throughout the movie, like when Leatherface is trying to get his chainsaw, which is in the walls for some reason. The camera follows his swings with a sledgehammer, much like how the camera follows Jack Torrance's with an axe. But they directly rip off the Blumhouse Halloween trilogy. Now you may be wondering, how do they rip off Halloween? Well, viewer, I'll tell you. They bring back the final girl from the first movie. But unlike in Halloween, it's not the same actress because the girl who plays Sally in the original is dead. So they recasted her as some random old lady. They blatantly copy what Blumhouse did with Laurie Strode, making her a badass final girl whose entire life is devoted to finding and killing the man who killed her friends. She comes in at near the end of the movie to save the day, but she has some moments spread throughout it. But there's actually an okay scene between Leatherface and Sally, where Sally realizes that Leatherface doesn't even remember her and couldn't care less. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. And this would actually be pretty cool if Halloween Kills didn't do the exact same thing. <laughs> now, in no way am I saying that Halloween Kills is a good film either, but it did everything way better than this one did. Anyways, then Sally gets completely obliterated, but survives. How do you survive that? Anyways, I gotta give another warning here about the main character's backstory, so if you don't want to deal with it, skip to the timestamp on the screen. So right before Sally finally dies, she gives a little pep talk to the main character talking about how she needs to escape her past and face her fears, but she wasted her entire life. She never got over this. But then the main character has to use a gun to get over her trauma of being in a mass shooting, and this could actually be something if it wasn't so terribly written in an awfully poor taste. Now I have no idea what they were trying to do with either of these two scenes, but whatever it was gets immediately undercut 10 minutes later when Leatherface comes back from the dead to get his final kill. Oh, and the ending of the film is supposed to be a modernized version of the ending of the first one, but it's just, it's just cringe. Well, the ending in the first movie felt earned and beautifully terrifying. This one feels like a Facebook meme. You see, it's funny because the car in the first one was being driven, but this one is an autopilot. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But oh no, that's not the end of the movie. There is a goddamn Marvel post credit scene showing Leatherface going home. This is almost as bad as the Hitler post credit scene from The Kingsman. Out of Hitler. What the fuck? The last thing I want to quickly talk about from this movie is the sound design. The music at times is actually pretty creepy, but there's this sound that they keep playing that I think might be from the original, but they're playing it for absolutely no reason. Oh my god, shut up. Anyways, this movie stinks. The acting is terrible, the characters are unlikable, the set pieces are bad, the dialogue and plot are even worse. Do not watch it, 0 out of 10. Turn around. Um, excuse me, what the actual fuck are you doing in my head? Okay. I'm gonna go watch a good movie now. Have sex, have sex.